Now, you're watching the meeting uh, between the Iranian and Saudi foreign ministers. This happening in the Iranian capital. We'll be hopefully bringing you the translation live as soon as uh, we get it. Uh, we've been watching this uh, because this is important to the Middle East. Really, one of the driving stories in the Middle East right now has been the rapprochement between Iran and Saudi Arabia in a deal brokered by China a number of weeks ago. And today, what you're watching is something close to the, the mirror image of what we saw a few days ago in Saudi Arabia when uh, the uh, Iranian embassy in Saudi Arabia was being reopened. And now the, it's the turn of the uh, Saudi embassy to be reopened. Our correspondent, Dorsa Jabari, was explaining uh, earlier that the embassy itself not reopened yet. There's a controversial uh, street name issue uh, that is being addressed. However, the Saudi diplomats will be working out of a hotel and providing the Saudi embassy. I'm paraphrasing here uh, what our correspondent, Dorsa Jabari, was telling us a little earlier. Um, and as you see, the press conference there between the Saudi ministers and the Iranian foreign ministers. All right, Dorsa Jabari joins us live from Tehran. Dorsa, you've been standing by. I was, I was paraphrasing you, Dorsa, so if you heard any of that and you want to correct any of it, please do go right ahead. Um, but look, we're looking at the picture, Dorsa, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but we're looking at the live shot of the Saudi and Iranian foreign ministers. We can't hear what they're saying yet. But what we can do is we can give our viewers context, and you can help us with that, on why this is important and what exactly it is that's happening today. Dorsa. Certainly. I think, first, this press conference has some technical issues. Um, and so I think we're waiting for the officials there to sort it out. Uh, this is important because... Um, the Saudi foreign minister, Faisal bin Farhan, is the first uh, foreign minister from Saudi Arabia to visit Iran in 17 years. Um, they severed diplomatic relations in 2016 after a Shia cleric was executed in Saudi Arabia. Demonstrations took place outside the embassy here in Tehran, and the demonstrators stormed the embassy. And it is exactly as they left it. Uh, seven years ago. Uh, we were there last week. The Saudi embassy is still, the windows are broken. There's still um, remnants of the damages mm. that was caused once the demonstrators went in. And so the Saudi officials haven't had a chance to fix the building that they own, um, and that is because of the name of the street. After the cleric was executed, uh, the municipality decided to change the name of that street and name it after the cleric, Bagar al-Nimr, and it still remains with that name. And that's one of the points of contention, as you mentioned. So the workaround for now seems to be that the Saudi officials will be working out of a hotel until um, the Saudi government finds another suitable location to purchase and make that their embassy. Now, this rapprochement is significant not only for Iran and Saudi Arabia, but also for um, the entire Middle East. Um, the situation in Syria, Lebanon, Yemen have all been places where Iran and Saudi Arabia have been on opposing sides of the conflicts and the uh, tensions there. So this is um, going to be seen as something important, not only for Iran and Saudi Arabia, but in the entire Middle East. Dorsa, um, Dorsa, at the same time, I continue, we continue to, to dip into this um, press conference because the audio issues, and I'm going to ask our viewers to just be patient with us here because the audio issues are what they are. Um, and as soon as we can get the audio back and the translation back, of course, we'll be bringing that to our viewers live. For the moment, uh, let me just confirm, for the moment, we are not having that audio, and so we can't bring that. Um, however, Dorsa, what I wanted to ask you earlier is whether there are any limits to the rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The reason I ask you this is that over the last few weeks, they have been going very methodically, deliberately, step by step, you know, the various meetings at increasing levels of their diplomacy and then the openings of the embassy. And I know you, under, you, you explained just now that the limits or the context to, the, to this opening. How far do they both want to take this rapprochement, Dorsa?
Well, I think it's uh, going to be as far as they can, really. There's going to be still differences between the two sides that is not going to change. But this is being seen as a first initial step in the right direction. Um, as I mentioned, there are still uh, issues in Yemen that the two sides need to resolve. Um, the situation in Syria is somewhat resolved, according to the Iranians anyways. Um, and I think the internal situation inside Iran is very important in how it's forced the government to move forward in its foreign policy. The amount of unrest that we saw, the protests that we saw in Iran over the past nine months uh, were something unexpected. And um, one of the main driving factors of that was the economy. The state of Iran's economy is abysmal. Inflation is at 60 percent. Unemployment rate is in double digits. Um, nearly 30 to 40 percent of the population. Dorsa, at least I'm going to respectfully interrupt line. you because we now have the audio and we can bring our viewers this press conference between the Saudi and Iranian foreign ministers live from Tehran. Aims at uh, implementing the agreement signed in Pekin on the 10th of March 2023. ما گفتگوهای مثبت و شفافی رو با همدیگه داشتیم این دیدار در چارچوب تکمیل توافقی که بین ما در ده مارس 2023 در پکن صورت گرفت شکل می‌گیره We are working these days to start the embassies and consulates activities in both countries and we have seen the reopening of the Iranian embassy in Riyadh, Iranian consulate in Jeddah, and uh, the embassy of Saudi Arabia in Tehran will be reopened soon. I'd like in this regard to thank and express my appreciation to the uh, colleagues in the Iranian Foreign Ministry because of the facilities given by them in order to activate our embassies and activities in both countries. The normal relations between our both countries must be always there because our countries are very important in the region. We need to have good neighborhood. The relations between our both countries are based on mutual respect of sovereignty, independence and non-interference in the internal affairs, respect of the United Nations Charter within the uh, international conventions and uh, resolutions. احترام متقابل و عدم دخالت در امور داخلی دو کشور و همچنین به همچنین انجام یا تعهد به منشور سازمان ملل متحد we all hope that this will reflect positively on both countries, will open domains of cooperation in all fields for the benefit of both countries. We also hope that uh, the relations, normal relations between our both countries will have positive uh, reflect and effect on the international domain, regional domain.
We need to commit to the security of the region, stability of the region, and cooperation for the economic development in the region and for the sake of the cultural and other relations between the countries of the region. I'd like to say in this connection that it's quite important to have cooperation between our both countries regarding the regional security and the naval security, and it's quite important to cooperate between the countries of the region to have our regions free from mass destruction weapons. I'm looking forward to meeting President Ibrahim Raisi to convey to His Excellency greetings of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness Prince Salman, Prince Mohammed ibn Salman, the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister. And uh, they are looking forward to receiving His Excellency in the kingdom very soon. My visit coincides with the occasion of Al Hajj season. All the hearts of Muslims are really willing to go to Mecca Al Mukarrama. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is quite honored to have the two holy shrines and to serve the pilgrims anytime. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will make everything available for this great purpose, the pilgrim seasons, and we welcome the pilgrims, pilgrims from Iran and we wish them all good rituals and may Allah forgive all the pilgrims. Muslims everywhere in these blessed days feel that atmosphere that we need to be together, that we need to be united and to cooperate for the benefits of the Muslims and Muslim countries. All right, you've been listening to the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia, who was just meeting his counterpart in Iran, the Iranian foreign minister. They were speaking from Tehran, where the two have been meeting. Let's bring in Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera's Dorsa Jabari, who's been covering this. Uh, Dorsa, let's take a few moments and explain exactly what's going on to our viewers. Um, and let's start at the beginning of this, which has been this rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran. How did it happen? Why did it happen? How did we get to today when we have the two foreign ministers meeting and embassies being reopened? 
Well, it happened because for seven years, Iran and Saudi Arabia did not have any diplomatic relations. And that was because the um, Saudi government executed a Shia cleric in January of 2016. And there were demonstrators here that went to the Saudi embassy in Tehran. And then they stormed the embassy and destroyed pretty much most of what was inside of that embassy. There's still the glasses of the facility of the building still were broken. It hasn't been fixed in the past seven years. So. During that time, uh, we had Iran and Saudi Arabia on different sides of conflicts in the Middle East, mainly Syria, Yemen, and then the tensions in Lebanon as well. Um, there were many countries that were trying to uh, mend this relationship, including Oman and Iraq. There were a number of meetings held between um, officials of, uh, from Saudi Arabia and Iran uh, to try and mend this relationship. And it was only by uh, in March of this year that the Chinese managed to uh, make that happen. So there was an agreement that was signed in Beijing that Iran and Saudi Arabia would resume full diplomatic relations. And they've been working on that over the past two months. And Iran reopened its embassy in Riyadh on June 6th and its consulate in Jeddah on June 7th. Now we have the uh, Saudi foreign minister in Tehran today to officially do the same thing without actually reopening the physical embassy, because uh, there's an issue with the street name that it's on. The street name was named after that Shia cleric that was executed in January of 2016, and the municipality has not changed it, uh, even though the foreign ministry has asked them to do so. So the Saudi officials are now looking for another space to purchase. And in the meantime, we understand they'll be working out of the hotel in Tehran. Dorsa, if you take a big step back, the Saudi Arabia-Iran relationship has been one of the driving forces, right? One of the things that really structures the way the Middle East has been working over the last few years. They were arch rivals, and they found themselves opposed on every issue, every regional issue that I can think of. So now, if there is a rapprochement, that means that you were telling us earlier, wars in Yemen, wars in Syria, all those major things that are costing lives in the region, well, now they can, if not work together, at least not be antagonistic on those issues. Well, that's certainly the hope. That's certainly what many, um, not only in Iran, but in the region are hoping this coming together of these two countries back resuming diplomatic ties will mean uh, not only for the two respect, uh, respected countries, but also for the region. I think that's why this, um, meeting today is so significant is because it is providing us with an opportunity. It is providing the Iranian officials as well as the Saudi officials to take this chance to um, put aside their differences, uh, to, to really put the security of the region first before the differences that they have with one another and try to mend this relationship that's been hostile for many, many decades. Of course, um, Iran is a predominantly Shia country and Saudi Arabia is predominantly a Sunni one. And these two different sects in Islam are uh, usually uh, trying to m mend the relationship as far as history goes. You can look back in, within their own history. And this rivalry is almost always seen most highlighted between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Of course, there are two regional superpowers. And Iran now, a nuclear power, is something that has been a cause for concern for Saudi Arabia as well. So the nuclear program in Iran is also an issue that has been at the forefront of the uh, issues that Saudi Arabia has had. Uh, Saudi officials saying in the past that if Iran continues to progress its nuclear program, they will pursue their own, uh, causing fear that it would spark a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. So these two uh, powerhouses providing um, the world with most of its oil. They're two of the top producers of oil uh, in the world. We have to remember that as well. So mm. there's a lot they have in common, but there's a lot of differences. And now I think both sides, for various reasons, have decided that it's time to try at least have a relationship that is not as hostile as it's been in the past. Dorsa, that's all invaluable context. And just before I leave you, one question I meant to ask you before that I didn't have time to ask you is, now that we have these decisions uh, to reopen embassies in both, country, uh, in both countries, and you have explained the embassy not yet reopened in Tehran, I understand that. But now the decision has been made, the announcement has been made, how do Iranians look at all of this? Because for years they heard from their leadership that their arch enemy 
with Saudi Arabia. I think many ordinary Iranians are not that concerned with Iran's foreign policy at the moment. There's many internal issues that they're more concerned with. And we asked just a few weeks ago, when the news of this story happened, we asked ordinary Iranians on the street, what do they think? And some of them said, look, Saudi Arabia it's all good that they want to be friends again, but they have a relationship with the United States. And this is something that it's important to point mm. out. And for the countries that try to maintain a balance between Iran and the U.S. is inevitably impossible because Iran and the United States are at each other's throats, to be honest, most of the time. There's many, many differences. And I think Saudi Arabia will find it quite difficult to manage the relationship with both countries that are such uh, hardened enemies. But for the time being, they are trying to use this opportunity to establish a relationship with Iran. And we heard just now from the Saudi foreign minister saying that the regional security uh, is the most important thing. And I think that's what they're focusing on. A really subtle diplomatic balance that multiple players are going to be working on. Thank you so much, Dorsa Jabari, for putting all of that into context for us. Dorsa Jabari from Tehran.